the scene editor and layout gives you a big picture of your scene. It allows you to um, see all the items in your scene and do some manipulation with the items. I thought what we would do is take a look at a portion of the scene editor. Uh, so what I'm going to do is come over to scene editor drop down. Now there's the classic scene editor but we're going to work within the uh, the new scene editor and our standard scene editor. So I'm going to open the scene editor and let's focus on the items tab. Okay, So this is going to give us a list of everything in our scene and I thought we could kind of uh, explore the lay of the land here in the items tab. Uh, the first thing to, to notice is we've got our, our different columns and the A stands for active. And if we, I'm just going to, we'll come back to what this is all about, but I'm just going to list everything out. And you can see we've got a check mark by everything. That means that everything in the scene is active, uh, which means that if it's something that would render, um, like an object, uh, then it's going to render when we go to render. If we turn it off, well, it's not going to be active. So this is a, a, a quick way of, of taking objects in the scenes and making them inactive just by coming over here. And we can say, um, we're going to take um, our helicopter and we're not going to make it active. Okay, You can still see it when it's inactive, but you won't be able to see it in the render. So I'm just going to do a quick render and we don't have a helicopter. If I make those active and we do a render, we have a helicopter. So it's a quick way of working and that's the the active column and you just have a check mark it's either active or inactive you have the next column which is your visibility and depending on your items will depend the type of item will depend on what your options are for a light we've got a little dot here if I uncheck it it will no longer be visible okay uh, in in the scene so I'm going to go ahead and check that back if we go over to cameras well we can have it so that you can't see the camera let me um, go to perspective view and we've got our camera right over here I'm just going to hide it so we don't see it so what well, what would we use that for well when I'm rigging uh, or or animating and I don't need to see where my lights or camera um, are well I just hide them and lock them and then they're out of the way I don't accidentally select them they don't get in the way I get to focus on what I want to focus on okay so that's a, a handy a handy feature there now when it comes to objects we have different ways of displaying the the object. I'm going to slide my view over here so we can see the helicopter and we'll come over here and we're going to change uh, it to bounding box mode. Okay, So all I'm doing is left clicking on the little icon and I can choose the different view style that I want to work with. So I'm going to set this to say front face wireframe. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, again, if I'm working on an element in the scene uh, and I don't really need to see all the other elements <clears throat> in, say, full texture mode, I can come over here and, well, I can hide it. I don't, maybe I don't need to see it. Or maybe I need the bounding box just so I can get an idea of where, say, buildings or this helicopter is so my character doesn't walk into it. Um, I have the ability to set it to, to any view style that, that I want to. Okay, and uh, and that goes for each. It can each object can be independent of the the view style that you have selected in your uh, in your actual viewport. So that's a really handy uh, set of uh, options for your items in the scene. It's the visibility column, and we just have uh, the ability to change how we're going to view our items. Okay. Uh, next to that are our channels. So if we want to, or sorry, next to that is the lock column. So if we want to, we can go in and say, um, I want to be able to see the lights and, and have them active, but I'm going to lock them. Okay. And what that stops me from um, being able to do is select, I'm trying to select in the viewport and I can't select them. Now, it doesn't stop you from selecting them. Uh, uh, from any type of selection. If I come down here to lights, well, I just selected it. And we can see it's checked right over here. That item is selected. Um, so what, it, what you're really locking when you use this lock feature is locking it from accidentally clicking on it in the viewport in your workspace. 
Okay, so again, when I'm rigging, I like to hide and lock my lights and cameras so that um, I don't accidentally select them. And that would that this is where we would do that. Next to that is our channels column. If we want to see the channels for an item, we can just click and that little plus sign becomes a minus. We've dropped it down and we can see the the individual channels for the item that we're working with. Okay. Next to that is a list of your items, lights, cameras, objects, and we've got it listed here. Now, um, right now we're, we can we can decide how we're going to display these. If I click this title here, I can choose between sequence and and um, we can drop it um, from top to bottom, bottom to top. ID, same thing. Name, same thing. Um, I can click active, visibility, lock, channels. So I can choose the way I want these items displayed and what order I want these um, items displayed. Okay. I can also, um, before I said, well, let me drop it to list view. I can also change it to a uh, hierarchy view. And the hierarchy view allows me to see the parent-child relationship, right? And all I have to do is click on this little arrow to drop down, and I can see all the children of the parent here, okay? And I can just collapse those. I also have a right-click menu that I can, say, select all items, okay? I can have different... I have different selection options and depending on what I have selected is what my selection options going to be. If I come up to Ambient Master and right click, now I have more selection options. I can select the, the child items, I can unselect the child items, I can select similar, I can, uh, well, I can select none. Um, so all different types of selection options. I can also, when I have this selected, uh, I have hierarchy. Now if you notice when I came over here and clicked, um, that's ghosted out and there's no options, but because I have hierarchy here, I can expand channels, collapse channels, expand child items. Okay, so now all the child items are being viewed. So don't forget about this um, right uh, mouse menu because we've got all kind of options. If I want, I can open open up the, motions proper, the motion options panel here uh, for the item. I can um, uh, open up the item properties panel. Okay. I can edit channels. I can rename uh, right here. If I decide that I don't like the name of this light, I can go and rename the light. Okay. I can uh, I can even come over here and say, you know what? I need to uh, add a null object, and it'll be the same thing as going over to the items tab and adding a null. I can. Uh, add an object, which will load an object, add a camera, uh, we've got the different lights, okay? I can clear items from um, my my list. So I've got all kind of options that I can take advantage of when um, when I right click and use the, uh, the menu here, okay? So that's one way of um, taking advantage of the, the the items panel here is using the right mouse button. So we've got list view, hierarchy view. I'm going to just drop that. Or actually, I'll leave that open. And I'm going to work with just these ambient lights right here, one through four. And I don't need to worry about all the other stuff. So I'm going to hide everything else. It's still there in the scene. I just can't see it. This can come in really handy if you're, say, um, say you're animating a character and there's only, say, 12 controls that you use when animating a character instead of having to filter through it, you could have hundreds of items in the scene uh, you could just hide the ones that you don't need and then I can just work with these uh, and whenever I'm done I just unhide okay so this doesn't hide your selection it hides whatever is unselected okay it's a really handy feature for for moving around in the window now I just um, used one of the features by accident, which is the parenting feature. If you're in hierarchy mode uh, and you want to do parenting, um, I accidentally clicked and dragged and parented to an item. So like if I want this item to not be parented to this item, I'll just click it, drag it over to the left, let go, and now it's no longer a child. If I want it to be a child, I'll just click and drag to it, and now it's a child. If you want to avoid uh, doing any parenting work in list view. Okay, 
that's just an option it's a quick way of doing some some parenting so if I want the camera to be part of this ambient master I'm just gonna grab it move it up and now it's a, a child of the master if I don't want it to be I'll just move it to the left quick way of, of parenting you can still go in the motion options panel and do it that way but this is a, another way of, of working with that okay now not only can we select items and hide and unhide them we can also um, search for items okay say I'm looking for um, uh, the helicopter and the helicopter blade and I know the name of it but I've got so many items in the scene and I start scrolling down I'm like well, where is it a quick way is to use the find and I'm just gonna type in M I and it already starts to find it but the more you type the you know the more accurate it'll be so if but the, the only things in the scene with M I uh, let's actually back up actually the only thing with capital M no nope, there's some ambient in there so I and it limits it to this quick feature there's no enter that you hit you just start typing and it'll find it and then once you find it you can hide everything else and now you're working with that okay so the find feature is a, a, a pretty handy feature another handy feature is let's grab these ambient and there was um, I'm gonna grab these two lights as well and say I do that and I do that for like I don't know 30 items but it, it could even be for five or six items um, but it takes a while to find what you're looking for and you're selecting it and you finally get it and then you go man I don't want to go through that selection option again well I've got selection sets right here so I'm just gonna save this selection and I'm gonna call this um, lights and hit OK I'm gonna deselect come over to sets and now it's in the list there's six items I grab it hide what I don't want then I, I um, uh, do un hide and then I come back over here and I can just select so selection sets super handy again if you're gonna be working on um, if you're gonna be working on a scene and you know one of the things that you do a lot when you're when you're working on a scene is selecting items and if you can quickly jump to what you need selected it, it really does speed things up so selection sets are are key you can also do filtering if we come over to filtering I'm gonna go to options and I'm going to um, I'm gonna filter something that has anything that has ambient in the name and uh, I'm gonna ignore the uh, um, actually I'm gonna ignore the case and I'm gonna enable filtering and you can already see it starts to filter okay I can save this filter I'm just gonna give it a name for future use because I can have as many filters as I want again it's just another way to gain control over working with the scene editor and and displaying what you want um, displayed and I'm gonna go ahead I'll leave enable fil uh, item filtering on and I'm gonna close this because I can always come up to filtering and uh, disable it I can also create filters for um, channel filtering as well as item filtering okay so this is just a brief look at um, the working with the scene editor in the items tab it's just so that you can gain full control over selecting and viewing uh, what's in your scene uh, which will definitely speed up workflow and uh, and allow you to um, only work on the items and see the items that you want to see and of course display or lock the items that you want to including channels so again, just a brief look at the items tab in the scene editor.